I'm Greg. I'm Christina. We're the Adventure Dorks. And this is our van Schmoop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're uh, heading out in a few days to go south for the winter because it's starting to get cold in Canada. And uh, we're going to head to Mexico this year. We're going to try that out. Uh, first going through the States to uh, Southern California, Arizona, and then into Mexico. Huh? We'll be gone until May, so about six months. And then um, we'll be back in DC. Yeah, we're, we're young snowbirds. You know, one night I'm watching Airstream videos and that led to van videos. Yeah. And I just got really excited. Like, I had no idea this is a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So that sort of led us into the whole van purchase yeah. and um, making I was, it happen. Yeah, I was running um, a business. I have the business we still run together now, doing social media marketing and he's a graphic designer and I do the social media side of things and the marketing strategy. And so I'd already been working remotely in Newfoundland. We had moved to Newfoundland at that point. And uh, so it was just convincing him to quit his nine to five job and get on the road. Yeah, and, yeah it didn't take too much arm twisting. and. And now we're it's, running uh, our business together and doing it out of the van, really. Yeah, yeah. well, that's been great. Yeah. So we've done sort of one year of doing this, and it was uh, it's probably the most successful year in terms of personal development <laughs> yeah. and uh, best year of our lives, fulfillment, maybe? kind of best year of our lives. So <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, we said let's just do this again. Uh, yeah. We both love camping and mountain biking and adventuring, and uh, this just lets us do all of this. Absolutely. All of this and I think the key difference for us than other van dwellers is we're not 100% in our van. We will stay with friends and family. So we're, this year we'll be in our van probably for about six to eight months, depending. We'll probably live in our van a little bit in BC, but we have so much family and friends all across Canada that we end up staying. Nobody wants us to stay in the van. They're like, come stay in the house. Yeah. And we're like, but we love our van. <laughs> so it's a 1998 uh, Dodge Ram uh, 3500, Great West van. Uh, made it or produced it, I don't know how to say that. Um, these are super, I mean, they're pretty common. Um, the style of van is just like your standard kind of class B camper van. We've got, you know, the awning, um, all of the stuff. It's got the fridge and the stove and, and uh, storage and all that stuff. It has a shower, which was the main thing for us. So we're like, we're not interested in going to gym gyms to like use the washroom and shower and stuff. So yeah. we're like, let's just, anyway, we found this guy and we're like, this is perfect. It came with this bike rack. So usually we have our two mountain bikes on here. This van is great for the storage Lots space. Storage. Um, I'll just open this guy briefly. This guy right here and that guy right there are both cargo bins. Yeah. And, um, they're lockable. This one's actually where the electricity, the shore power is. I think that's where we is. shore power and um, I think the sewer stuff, I used to keep it here. That type of stuff, right? So not a huge space, but that's just for some, you know, bits and bobs. This guy here is where we keep our camping stuff and just miscellaneous items. It's great to have the external storage. We call it the basement. The basement, <laughs> yeah. So right now we've just got like our umbrella. It's an umbrella. <laughs> an umbrella. <laughs> some we'll extra RV stuff and some, uh, you know, backpacks and stuff. Yeah, so come on in. So we've set up this permanent bed, uh, but one of the things we do is we have these pull out tables, which is awesome because you can sit here or we can put it over there and use it as additional um, cutting space, like to cover, you know, when you're cooking, putting stuff here. And we can also take it outside, so sometimes we'll sit outside with a nice uh, a nice couple. We have two of these, but today we only have the one. Pretty standard. The only thing we changed here is uh, these are uh, light-proof um, blackout curtains. curtains. Blackout curtains, yeah, that Christina sewed and installed here um, just to help with the privacy. Um, they just, you know, they come down. Pretty standard stuff. And yeah, light doesn't penetrate this. So we've been camping in this, and I've checked it out outside. Fully lit up on the inside, you can't really tell that anybody's in here, which is great. We don't boondock in the city very much, you know, uh, stealth-wise, um, but I think we could do it. Mm -hmm. Haven't really tried it too much. One of the things we saw um, probably on Pinterest or something was these mason jar setups, and we love them. It's great because you could even just, I think this is the one Greg uses as a coffee cup. So it's just like a cup holder, but then of course we've got our spices and like stevia and sugar and <laughs> tea and There's coffee there yeah and then of course we're really into cooking so we had to have all our spices so we have them all tucked away magnetic storage <laughs> filled <laughs> filled with them 
we have your standard cooktop like that i like how it's white it came white and so we painted everything white um, you can see the original color here because so we're going to do a feature wall but we just still haven't got around to doing it it'll happen yeah uh, but we used to have a big cabinet right here and it was just taking up so much space and it had some water damage on the bottom so we pulled out the whole cabinet and we liked how there was so much room uh, because there's actually so many cupboards so much storage that we didn't need this big cabinet so once it was out we're like let's just get a chair so we got a nice chair gives us additional seating and we can pull it out and use it around a campfire like in a true glamping style <laughs> <laughs> yep. we have um our bathroom here a uh, shower this is like my favorite thing in the van <laughs> the hot water is awesome the pressure is excellent and um, we find this sink is kind of not really necessary but we end up using it as like a shelf <laughs> which is it's good to have it's always good to have an extra shelf uh, but yeah bathroom's perfect so what's your hot water tank like um, it's just kept like stored under there and you just have to click a little button and it takes probably about here I don't know 10 minutes or less and then it heats right up and it's beautifully hot <laughs> what does it run off of? propane propane yeah okay. it's a propane uh, water heater yeah we have a nice status board here so you can see we're low on propane and we're low on our fresh water but our batteries in good condition <laughs> yeah. and then our whole tank so we'll be able to at a quick glance know our status and be able to plan like okay we need to go get propane or we need to yeah. dump our tanks or whatnot yeah it's pretty handy uh, we have the uh, three-in-one uh, or three-way fridge, so you can run on propane. Um, of course, it only has beer in it. Right now. <laughs> um, propane, uh, electricity, or uh, 12 volt. So it's great. We found we've used the 12 volt usually when we're driving because the battery is constantly being charged. If we <laughs> if we don't, if we forget to switch it to propane, yeah. it dies. The battery dies in about three or four hours, so you can't leave well, it. Shorter for too than that, even. Yeah, probably on, shorter than that. You know, under two, I think. Yeah. Um, so we learned some lessons, uh, you know, getting getting it figured out. But yeah. now it's like we drive on 12 volt. We stop. We light the propane. It's good to go until we leave again, and then we switch back to 12 volt. And yeah. It's, works great. Don't mind the insides because we still haven't repacked and stuff for our trip but you can see there's lots of storage here like it looks small but you start putting things in there and it just fills up and it, it's tons and tons of storage and then even back here we've got where the speakers are for the sound system there's even space there so as long as you're not damaging the electronics you can go all the way back so great lots and lots of storage right. we don't have a fan like a fantastic fan or anything but we do have this hood fan which just works off the it helps with the stove and if we're in the shower we'll just put that on and yeah it does it does the job yeah yeah we're kind of uh, we're doing upgrades um, piecemeal basically so we've purchased a solar panel and once we get down to the warmer weather we're gonna install that in, in um, California or Arizona this trip um, and maybe next year we might get the fantastic vent because uh, I think it for the hot weather it would be a great upgrade as is like as it came out of the box this van has fit us really well like we haven't really needed solar um, we've gotten by on uh, just standard so it's been great that way mm -hmm. yeah, anything else is gravy for us uh, another good thing to have in the van are lots of cutting boards. So we have two, one really big one with handles that can act as a tray as well. And so put it there for kind of meal prep. We exactly. put the board there. You can expand your <laughs> your table size. Um, and if we have, like I said, we have two of these normally, so you can actually make it quite big. Um, so those are really handy because also even here, like I'll sit here um, and eat lunch and Greg will sit there and this will be like our table for lunch. So having uh, cutting boards, I think, is uh, nice. Since it's such a small space, there's a lot of, you know, perfunctory storage in these vans that reduces the overall feeling of openness and, um, you know, fluidity of the space. I, I We were looking at this like we're going to be living in this thing, so we removed a lot of the storage from it. Um, right now you're sitting in a cubby that held the microwave and coffee maker and the mini cabinet that is pretty common with these class B's 
Um, and it's now a hangout zone. It's now like a cozy, tiny, <laughs> mini hangout zone. And um, behind me here, you know, in the back, there's these these two spaces here were just full of cabinets. You can see the line going here where this entire thing, where I sit frequently uh, on my laptop, this was a cabinet space and the same thing with across here. So we actually removed a bunch of stuff. We removed these two cabinets. The fixtures above uh, the window was a big blocky like wooden bulkhead thing just covering that and I unscrewed it and it's like now it looks way more easy on the eyes and the whole place feels uh, lighter and airier. So uh, I think by reducing the storage space, we've actually increased our enjoyment of the space. A lot of people when they transition to van life, they're, they have to adopt a minimalist type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Was it a hard transition or was it something that you already thought about beforehand? Uh, I think I, okay, it was not an easy transition. And that's the part that was the most challenging was the transition from, you know, we had a three-story house in Newfoundland that we were renting um, with two living rooms and all the space in the world to fill with all of our crap, <laughs> right? Um, so the initial purge was pretty big deal. It was tangly, as we would say in Newfoundland. Uh, a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work. But for me, it wasn't like emotional work. It wasn't difficult emotionally to let go of stuff. Uh, I went away to university for four years. I purged a bunch of stuff then. I taught English in Korea for a year, purged stuff then. Um, two of us have moved around quite a bit and you still manage to collect things, but really nothing feels better than throwing things away, I find. Uh, the, you know, you feel free, you, f you feel more free, the less things that, that weigh you down. It's a cliche, but it is so true. Um, so for, I think the challenge for us was just the physical process of getting rid of things and scouring the house and throwing things away, donating, selling. Um, but in terms of uh, what it's offered us in return, it's, uh, you can't, it's priceless. Um, right now we're at a very minimal um, baggage load. Basically the van uh, was pretty full on our last trip and going through the process of living in it, we've purged a bunch of stuff that we just were like, we don't need any of this stuff. I'm not gonna be a chef, like van chef, like I thought I might have been. I'm actually gonna eat really simply and make simple meals and stuff like that. So we're leaving uh, a couple of bins of stuff with Christina's mom and I think we're pretty light on our feet right now. We've attained that nice zen balance, I guess, of uh, only the things we need. Um, really, I personally don't need anything more than my phone, a pair of headphones, my laptop, an external hard drive, and clothes on my back. <laughs> uh, everything else, pretty keep it keep it streamlined. Going minimal is, I think, uh, extra hard for a woman, and that's because we have expectations to wear certain kinds of clothing, certain kinds of you know makeup and all that stuff which takes up more space um, so I already was fairly um, had let go a lot of that in my life over the years I wear way less makeup almost none now and um, was already fairly moving into casual clothing but I was doing a lot of um, co conference speaking or attending conferences where I have to wear business clothes and as a woman it's not just one suit you have you can't wear the same thing all the time it just no one will ever point it out but it's this unspoken peer pressure and um, but what I found was after we lived this nomadic life for about six to eight months my business has changed and I do less of those businessy networking things and so I can get away with less amounts of those clothing um, and so I gave a lot of it to friends who are still working in, in business environments and so that's been really freeing for me is letting go of some of those feminine things that I, I don't need anymore and it, I think that's a little bit harder for women to go through than men but um, it is freeing. It is so freeing. <laughs> we feel like adventure should be accessible for everyone. You don't have to be fit and young and hot and like an Instagrammer mm -hmm. to to get out there and enjoy van life and 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 doing this stuff. Um, you know, we're in our forties. I'm turning forty this year, and um, you know, we've we've always enjoyed camping and hiking and 
and now we've gotten back into mountain biking. I used to mountain bike a lot when I was 16. Yeah, and um, I've only just discovered it, which is great. I love it. It's so great. Yeah. So like we, you know, I don't know if it comes across in our videos, but you know, the whole kind of point of what Adventure Dorks is about is it's really accessible to everyone. Do get out there and have fun. Mm -hmm. Get out there and start learning new things. Living the kind of life we're living where we can get out on the road and experience new things but still we still have work we still work almost nine to five maybe yep. we've reduced it a little bit <laughs> yep. we we're basically work working professionals but we get to do it in a new place every day and it's or every week or every month whatever we decide yeah and that's pretty cool and if the weather gets bad we get we get to decide to just pick up and leave and um, where our families are spread across the country it also allows us to live in BC for part of the year, in Newfoundland for part of the year, where yep. his family's from, yep. and then explore the world for the other part of the year. So a lot of times we'll do it in the van, but I think in the future, um, we'll, you might also see us in Asia or in Europe or something, yep. and maybe in a van there or maybe in Airbnbs, like who knows? But yeah. the whole point is that we get to live um, wherever we want, whenever we want, and we're really lucky and privileged to be able to do that. Absolutely. And it allows us this really neat lifestyle where I get to try mountain biking or, <laughs> you know, maybe we'll try surfing this year. But yeah, it's funny because we're uh, also, uh, we're in, like Greg said, we're in our 40s, um, early 40s. Right. And a lot of other people that we meet who are doing this kind of lifestyle are usually really young or they're retirees. So it's hard right. to actually meet people our age that are doing this kind of life. Um, but I think there's a lot of people who could be and we have so many friends and family who are like super jealous of our life So I think we're yeah. on to something. <laughs> yeah, we're living life for us. I think so, Some of our family thinks we're crazy because they couldn't live in such a small space They step into the van and they're, they're like Especially with two people they're like, how great, do you do it? You work old. together all day and you live in this tiny yeah, space. Don't you yell? Don't you get you tired of it or something? And we're like, no, we actually really love it. Yeah. It's so comfortable and cozy you know, if you're driving all day or you're, you're working all day and then you pull up to your campsite in a desert somewhere, we shut the van off and then, you know, we'll put a podcast on, uh, we'll flick the lights on and I'll start making dinner and maybe have a glass of wine or something and it's just like we're at home. You yeah. Know, except we wake up and we're in these crazy different spots all the time. So it's really, it's really yeah. exciting. What would you say to somebody that is thinking about this lifestyle, that wants a more adventurous lifestyle? What kind of advice would you give? Just do it. Try it out. Um, you know, it's for us, we wanted to invest a few more bucks into a van that we didn't have to worry about. So the cost for entry for us was, you know, um, more than maybe some would want to spend. You can spend 3000 bucks on a van. You can spend and 500 bucks on a van. Spend 500 <laughs> bucks on a van. You can spend 15,000. Yeah. You can spend a hundred thousand. Um, yeah. try it, try out, you know, get what you can afford, fix it up. If you're inclined, mm -hmm. we're not. I'm not mechanical at all. Um, so we put a couple more bucks into our van. If you're adventurous, if you think you might be adventurous, um, take a crack at it. It's really fun. Yeah, I would say too, like one of the things we did was we planned a 30 day trip. So it's, it's, it's long, but so you can see what it's like to live in a van, but then you have an escape at the end of it. So our initial plan was Newfoundland to Vancouver, drive through the States, take 30 days. And then we arrived in Vancouver and we had a place to stay for three months. So we stayed in Vancouver for three months and we, that 30 days, we knew, we knew within two weeks that we loved this kind of life. And so after the 30 days were up, we started planning the next trip, which was much longer. And now this one's even longer. So it's, you can baby step your way into it. Hey guys, it's Forrest. I'm here with the Adventure Dorks. Great. Uh, thanks Good for stand. watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and where can they find you? Uh, adventuredorks.com and Instagram is at adventuredorks and then the YouTube adventuredorks just look for adventuredorks. You'll find us. <laughs> Sweet. See you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>